What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is why the F-15 terrified the Soviets. We had a little bit of a crash course on this from the fight electrician. Yeah. A good video, go and check it out if you haven't seen it. This is a bit more of an in-depth one, I believe. Okay. Or at least we got told it was, but when you enjoyed this, which we did, if you want a bit more information, check this video out. It's a good title as well. Uh, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Yeah, probably, yeah, but it will explain itself, I think. I hope you're enjoying a bit more consistent videos the past few days. Like I say, we're getting a couple months away from when we're going to America around that time yeah. so we're wrapping well, up videos. Your mum's been able to come and help loads with Archie at the moment so exactly and we've Archie has been appearing in the videos a little bit uh, so hopefully enjoy them if you're smash that button smash the subscribe button and are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Why the F-15 terrified the Soviets what we got. In July 1967, the Soviet Union reveals what appears to be a new super fighter okay. and it sets off alarm bells. We currently have no fighter in our operational inventory that could consistently, if successfully, combat the Fox Pack. Ooh, okay. It is thought to have multiple air-to-air, long-range, air-to-surface missile capability at a speed of Mark III. Oh, With the United scared, States the and Soviet yeah. Union locked in a struggle for air superiority, the Soviets seem to be winning. Faced with the prospect of being outclassed in the skies, the United States would respond by engineering the greatest fighter jet in history. Not that way to respond to. <laughs> I know I've said this so many times before, but just imagine flying one of them. I know, I know. Like, so much too. speed, so much power. Oh, yeah. I'd like, go through me. I'd love to do it. I'd be freaking, I'd love to be able to go in the passenger and someone else doing someone it. Someone else driving it, but yeah. I, I think that'd be an incredible experience, yeah. wouldn't it? But like the G-Force and stuff like that. In the Korean War, early fighter jets like the American F-86 and Soviet MiG-15 squared off in fierce air-to-air -air battles. Both were light, agile jets built for close-range dogfighting. But by the mid-1950s, new technologies were beginning to radically transform fighter aircraft design. Powerful new radars could detect the enemy from much greater distances, while newly introduced guided missiles could hit targets kilometers away. Military planners grew convinced that air battles of the future would be fought beyond visual range, okay. where the enemy wouldn't be more than a distant blip on a radar screen. And it meant the newest fighter jet, the F-4 Phantom, was no longer light or agile. It was fast, heavily loaded with missiles, and carried a powerful radar. Many believed that dogfighting had become obsolete. But in reality, nothing could be further from the truth. In the Vietnam War, the Air Force's new approach was put to the test, nice. but things didn't go as planned. The skies over Vietnam were a chaotic mix of enemy and friendly aircraft, and the systems designed to help Air Force pilots identify the enemy proved unreliable, forcing pilots to get in close to visually confirm each target. The whole idea of engaging from a distance fell apart. The new F-4 Phantoms were pulled into close quarter dogfights against more agile MiGs, something good. their pilots yeah. had never been trained to do. And the Sounds Phantoms' like guided missiles proved hopelessly inaccurate. Designed for larger high altitude targets, initially only 14% ever hit anything. Oh, wow. And when the missiles failed, pilots were left defenseless yeah. because the F-4 was built without a gun for close combat. Ooh, the good. larger, less maneuverable Phantoms with their notoriously smoky engines were easily spotted. The more agile MiGs lured the F-4s in close, knowing they were vulnerable. The so I can, I can see why they were sl like slacking at this point. Yeah. And then when they brought out something even better, it's like, oh, oh, we need to actually yeah. book our ideas up, I yeah. guess. And just barely held its own in this airspace because it is an interceptor used as a fighter, finding it difficult to compete with a fighter designed as a fighter. American pilots were being downed at alarming rates and military planners were learning that the age of dogfighting was far from over. Air Force planners scrambled to respond, equipping the F-4 with pod-mounted Gatling guns and training pilots Five, to engage please. the more maneuverable MiGs. But these were stopgap solutions. What the Air Force really needed was a new dedicated air superiority fighter, and it meant scrapping every one of its earlier concepts for the next generation of fighter aircraft, oh, wow. which now looked too large, too heavy, and likely to fare even worse than the Phantom. And they'd have yeah. to move quickly, 
because in 1967, the Soviet Union unveiled a new fighter of their own, and it looked nothing like the MiGs that F-4 Phantoms were squaring off with in Vietnam. Everything seemed to suggest a fighter built for extreme maneuverability, with twin tails, a massive wingspan, and monstrous engines. Intelligence experts suspected that the Soviets were using advanced, lightweight materials, along with new radar and weapon systems. A few months later, the Soviets went on a record-setting spree, posting new world speed and altitude records with the new fighter. It's mad, isn't it? Like Official now, obviously, we were during the Cold War, we weren't born, uh, and then we've grown up on the, kind of like the US dominant mm -hmm. side, and we know the US is like a leader in it. Yeah. They've all things, which is where the F-15 is going to come into them, starting yeah. to lead it, I guess. But the fact that the Soviets at one point were being more in the in the yeah. and stuff, I had basically the upper hand mm -hmm. in the air at least, yeah. uh, and now. It feels the other way around. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just mad how in a short space of time she's talking changed. eighties, I guess, at this point. Yeah. Seventies, eighties, and then suddenly it's changed completely. Yeah. It's mad, it's isn't it? Crazy how it just it's crazy how in a short space of time because it is really a, in history. It's a oh, one hundred percent, isn't it? And it can just yeah. flip. A big change. Which then makes you think: in like 20, 30 years, is it going to continue U.S. dominance? Mm, Do you yeah. know what I mean? Hopefully, time will we, tell, I guess. yeah. Say hopefully because we're best mates in terms of the UK and US. But you never know, do you? If no. you think that big an audience flip, why can't other things change? Yeah, you know? Exactly. Be interesting. Officials suspected the worst. We currently have no fighter in our operational inventory that could consistently, if successfully, combat the Fox Bay. If the experience in Vietnam wasn't concerning enough, the Soviet Union now looked ready to unleash a new super fighter. Okay, that's not good. No. This is a well done video. After spending the better part of two decades building mostly interceptors, fighter bombers, and attack aircraft, the Air Force finally set its sights on building a state of the art air superiority fighter. In 1968, leading US aircraft designers were invited to submit proposals. Their entries would be assessed using a groundbreaking concept called energy maneuverability, a mathematical formula to help define a fighter's total performance in terms of speed, thrust, drag, and weight. Okay. In December 1969, the contract to build the new fighter was awarded to McDonnell Douglas. Their design was the product of two and a half million man hours of effort, Ooh, allowing development yeah. to begin immediately. How many guys did we have in it? Like yeah, the F-15 Eagle was designed from the ground up oh, for tactical nice. dominance in any airspace. Two afterburning turbofans could unleash a massive 48,000 pounds of combined back, thrust. Yeah. yeah. Enough yeah, power the to engines, break. Yeah, the engines, they will just power it and it gets absolutely rapid. The sound barrier even while flying straight up. With a top speed of over Mach 2.5, the F-15 would be the fastest fighter jet ever produced by the United States. For peak performance, the engines were fitted with variable air intakes, with a computerized air inlet control system adjusting to ensure optimal airflow at any speed or angle of attack. Where earlier fighters like the F-4 had a reduced wing area for high supersonic speeds, in the F-15 engineers instead opted for low wing loading, which combined with a high thrust to weight ratio delivered superior maneuverability. For maximum situational awareness, the cockpit was mounted high in the fuselage with a canopy offering a commanding 360-degree view, along with a digital heads-up display fully integrated with radar and avionics. Okay. Eight Sparrow and Sidewinder missiles were mounted under the wings and along the fuselage. But if things got up close and personal, a 20mm Gatling gun could dish out 6,000 rounds a minute. And for maximum Smart, survivability, engineers designed in triple redundant hydraulics, low vulnerability flight controls, and a reinforced airframe. With its combination of speed, power, and agility, the F-15 was ready to earn its place as one of the greatest fighters ever built. The oh, first, first prototype time? was unveiled in June 1972, oh. just three years after McDonnell Douglas was given the go-ahead. The new fighter was put through an extensive testing program, and it would I mean, have to prove itself. Is, although it's cool to be the first one to test it, I'd be so scared. The same because it's like two questions going. You're, you're gonna literally. You are. If it goes wrong, you're not gonna. How do you know it's not gonna fall apart when you finally go with insane? I would not be the first one. Yeah, I'd be breaking it against the best of what the Air Force had to offer. 
Up against the heavy F4 Phantom, the F-15 looked assured and in control, easily making quick work of the Interceptor. Good stall. Even the smaller, lighter F-5, used to simulate more agile make fighters in combat, struggled to shake the larger F-15. Overhead, overhead. I can't do it. Great stall. <laughs> In nearly every engagement, whether beyond visual range or close in dogfighting, the F-15 commanded an overwhelming advantage. With a true air superiority fighter on their hands, the Air Force was ready to send a message to the Soviet Union. Only a year and a half earlier, the Soviets posted new time-to-climb world records with the MiG-25. Okay. Now, the F-15 was about to erase them. Wow. In 1975, engineers stripped a pre-production F-15 of its non-mission critical components even removing its paint to make it as light as possible. Wow, even the in the paint. cold, dense air of North Dakota, the Eagle made a series of climbs from a dead stop, rocketing up to altitudes as high as 30 kilometers, right wow. to the edge of the Earth's stratosphere. Not only did the F-15 beat the MiG's records, it shattered them by more than 25%. Wow. The Air Force it only took a, a year and a half to do. Like, the panic bomb had made this, it's going rapid, a year and a half, 25%. What, what, two, uh, 25 million man hours? Yeah. Or 2.5, I can't remember which one. Insane. This crazy. Insane. Winner on their hands, and the F-15 Eagle would come to be recognized as one of the most successful fighter development programs in history. By 1974, the fighter was already in mass production, with over 400 early F-15A and B models ordered for the U.S. Air Force. And America's allies were also eager to get their hands on the new jet. The first foreign operator was Israel, beginning in 1976, okay. followed by Japan a couple years later, and Saudi Arabia. And with some of the first F-15s being deployed at West German air bases, right on the Soviet Union's doorstep, it seemed only a matter of time before the new fighter faced off against the MiG-25. Yep, I'm sure it would. I mean, we'll, we'll see you guys in a second, but my guess would be when it did yeah. finally face off. It was just like, yeah, great yeah, results. In 1976, the Americans finally got a first-hand look at the Soviet Union's superfighter. But it wasn't what they were expecting. In September of that year, Lieutenant Viktor Bilyenka, a 29-year-old pilot with the Soviet Air Defense Forces, made a fateful decision to escape the Soviet Union. And he did it by secretly flying his MiG-25 from a Soviet airbase in the Far East to a civilian airport in Japan. Okay. After more than a decade shrouded in mystery, the Americans got a chance to examine the Fox oh, Pet wow. down to every last detail. Mm. Although similar in size and appearance, the MiG-25 and F-15 had almost nothing else in common. Built mostly out of heavy nickel-steel alloy, the Fox Pet weighed nearly twice as much as the F-15. Okay. The large wings weren't for agility, they were needed just to get the monstrous jet airborne. Oh, so the enormous weight that meant that the MiG-25 could only pull a 4.5G maneuver. The F-15 was capable of nearly twice that. Wow. Most of what the MiG That's carried was upgrade. fuel needed yeah. to feed its enormous engines. Even so, its combat radius was a mere 300 kilometers. Its avionics used outdated vacuum tubes, and its radar lacked look-down capability meaning it couldn't even detect an F-15 flying below its horizon. Wow. The MiG-25 no was chance. anything but the dogfighting monster the Americans had feared. It was purely a high-altitude interceptor, designed to reach incredible speeds to catch enemy bombers. But it wasn't built to do much else. The Soviets had kept the Foxbat's capabilities a closely guarded secret, cashing in on its propaganda value and the alarm it had caused the Americans. I was but just now, thinking, like, just the, like how effective propaganda i mean we see it all the time in news and there's yeah. propaganda everywhere um but it just shows how effective it is yeah you see saying they're advertising it as this suddenly the us has put millions for into creating yeah. like billions i guess as well i mean it's probably backfired because the us have mm -hmm. finally got their act together and yeah. made a, a fighter which About, could yeah. potentially do it but in terms of imagine if the us had pumped all this money not being able to create something and then they realize oh the fox batting even that good yeah and it's like we just waste all that money mm -hmm. I, I, again let us know in the comments what you think on that but the fact that it worked out is just in like a, a backfire for russia like yeah. what soviet union like yeah you messed up here <laughs> now it was the soviets turn to panic because in 1976 the soviet union had no fighter that stood any chance of surviving a dogfight with an f-15 
F-15s scored their first victories in 1979, when Israeli pilots downed four Syrian MiG-21s in a single engagement. Wow. Over the years, the Eagle would win air battle after air battle, clearing the skies of adversaries See, almost as a matter of routine. Today, F-15s have racked up more than a hundred victories without a single defeat, wow. a record unmatched by any fighter in history. Early F-15A and B models were soon joined by C and D variants, improving on the aircraft's range, payload, and weapon systems. Originally conceived as an air superiority fighter, the F-15 would also be developed into a formidable ground attack aircraft, leveraging the fighter's superior range, speed, and payload. Yeah. Nearly a half century after taking to the skies, the F-15 remains vital to the US Air Force, with deliveries beginning in 2021 of the F-15EX, a thoroughly modernized replacement for the F-15C. The MiG-25 was never designed to combat an air superiority fighter like the F-15. But in January 1991, the two Cold War icons came face to face over the skies of Baghdad. Okay. The money's on. The, the outcome wasn't what anyone could have predicted. That's pretty obvious. Oh, wait, because well, what the MiG-25 lacked in maneuverability, it made up for in raw power as the fastest fighter of all time. And the Iraqis would use it to their advantage, devising a daring plan to ambush F-15 Eagles as they patrolled the skies. Okay. You can learn about this incredible air battle in my next video coming exclusively to Nebula this month. Nebula. I think that's an ad for Nebula. If you want to check that ad out, links in the description. If there is a video about that, which we can check out, mm -hmm. so I don't know what copyright's like with watching a Nebula video yeah. and then bringing it over, uh, let us know in the comments because that sounds awesome. It's not as we predicted, so it might not yeah, be an easy win be. by the US. It might not be. Let us know in the comments if we should find something about that out. If it's a video, please link it. Or, well, don't link it because links also get removed. But put it in, and if you see someone else who put it in, like it, and we'll try yeah. and spot it. Uh, that was good. It was good. Interesting. At least, it kind of feel like it terrified the Soviets, but the Soviets messed up. Yeah. Like, it was it, a, a, quite an even battle. The Soviets were like, oh, we've got this, which they didn't have. And the US yeah. went, okay, well, let's just let's just go to a whole new level. Yeah. And they did. It'd be interesting um, to see how it plays out. Yeah, definitely. Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe and watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.